Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Usatin, the lead author of Dermatologic and Cosmetic Procedures in Office Practice. I am a professor of family medicine, dermatology, and cutaneous surgery at the University of Texas Health Sciences Center in San Antonio. I am also the medical director of the University Skin Clinic. I have had the pleasure of teaching doctors to use the Hyfricator for the past 15 years. As you will see in this video, the Hyfricator is simple to use and easy to learn. In our skin clinic, we have a Hyfricator in each exam room and in the procedure rooms. It is a very important part of our skin surgery practice. Every electrosurgical procedure begins with the choice of the electrode and the power setting. The sharp-tipped electrodes are used for electrocoagulation and the treatment of fine vascular lesions. The blunt-tipped electrodes work well for electrodesiccation and curatage and the treatment of benign growth. The Hyfricator 2000 has two main settings, the low and the high, and also there's a bipolar setting. I mostly use the low setting, and the low setting has the ability to start with small numbers, even with decimal points, and on a lot of our procedures without anesthesia, we use 2.0 or 2.1, and then we can go all the way up with a maximum of 20. And this is what I use for something like a pyogenic granuloma. Now, if I need more wattage than 20 on low, then what I do is I put the handpiece there, pull this device out of low, push this over to high, push this in, and now I have the ability to use wattage settings all the way up to 35. Now, I can also control these numbers on the handpiece pencil by using the handpiece itself. So in the middle of the procedure, I don't have to go over to the instrument on the wall. I can make my adjustments right here on the handpiece. Electrosurgery can be divided into treating skin lesions without anesthesia, electrodesiccation with anesthesia, and electrocoagulation during skin surgery. We will start by demonstrating the treatment of cherry angiomas, seborrheic keratoses, skin tags, and telangiectasias without anesthesia. A sharp-tipped disposable electrode is used to eradicate multiple small cherry angiomas on the chest. The power setting is 2.1 watts on low. Watch how the red color disappears as the cherry angioma is eradicated. A blunt-tipped disposable electrode is used to electrodesiccate multiple seborrheic keratoses on the face with a power setting of 2.1 watts on low. Dermatosis papulosa nigra can be treated on the face or neck using a blunt disposable electrode on a power setting of 2.1 watts on low. You can see how the lesion turns gray as the tissue is destroyed. Small skin tags around the neck are being treated using a sharp tip disposable electrode with a power setting of 2.1 watts on low. Facial telangiectasias can be treated with electrosurgery using the disposable sharp tip electrode with a power setting of 2.0 watts on low. The electrode is touched gently to a portion of the telangiectasia and the button on the handpiece is carefully pressed. Now we will demonstrate how you can use electrosurgery to destroy benign growths and malignant tumors. A suspected pyogenic granuloma is excised from the thumb with a shave technique using a dermablade. A 5-0 curette is then employed to remove the remaining vascular tissue from the base of the lesion. 
Curettage is performed in multiple directions. The remaining tissue is then treated with electrode desiccation using a hyfricator and a sharp tip disposable electrode with a power setting of 20 watts on low. Curettage is then performed a second time to make sure all remaining friable vascular tissue is removed. The final step is electrode desiccation until there is no further bleeding and the remaining pyogenic granuloma is destroyed. A suspected pyogenic granuloma is excised from the face using a dermal blade and a shave technique. A 3O curette is then employed to remove the remaining vascular tissue. Electrodesiccation is performed with a hyfricator and a sharp tip disposable electrode to destroy remaining vascular tissue. Curettage is repeated with movement of the curette in multiple directions. Electrodesiccation is performed again to destroy any remaining tissue and to stop the bleeding. While the hyfricator was set on 20 watts on low, it is not unusual for the high setting to be needed in the treatment of pyogenic granulomas. A resistant plantar wart on the heel of the right foot will be treated with electrosurgery. The procedure begins with local anesthesia using 1% lidocaine and epinephrine injected through a 30 gauge needle. This can be quite painful, so it helps to stabilize the foot with the non-dominant hand. The surface of the wart is pared down with a number 10 scalpel. Electrosurgery is performed with a sharp electrode and a power setting of 18 to 20 watts on high, as the low power setting was insufficient. The smoke evacuator is used to avoid contamination of the air with human papillomavirus particles. Everyone in the exam room is also wearing a particulate respirator mask. A sharp disposable curette is employed to help remove the wart. The ward is firm and significant pressure must be applied to obtain adequate curettage. Electrodesiccation of the ward is again used to make the ward easier for successful curettage. The curette is able to reach deeper portions of the ward after electrodesiccation. Electrodesiccation is repeated and the smoke evacuator is used each time the hyfricator is used. This is a tough wart and the curette is used for further removal. Electrodesiccation with the smoke evacuator is now utilized as the final step in the treatment process. Electrodesiccation is performed circumferentially around the wart to make sure that no wart remains. A squamous cell carcinoma in situ was diagnosed with a shave biopsy at the previous visit. The procedure begins with local anesthesia using 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. Curettage is performed using a 7 mm disposable curette. Curettage is performed in all directions making sure to clear any remaining tumor from the edges. Electrodesiccation is performed using a blunt tip disposable electrode with a power setting of 16 watts on low. The curette is employed again, making sure to use it in multiple directions. Electrodesiccation is performed going back and forth across the affected area. A curette is used once again in all directions, including the edges of the tumor. Final electrodesiccation is performed. The last step includes circumferential electrodesiccation around the entire tumor.
A small basal cell carcinoma on the wrist was diagnosed with a shave biopsy. This relatively low-risk lesion in a sun-exposed area is amenable to electrodesiccation and curatage. The procedure begins with local anesthesia obtained using 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. Curatage is performed with a 5 mm disposable curette. The curette is used to scrape off the softer cancer from the surrounding normal skin. Electrodesiccation is performed using a blunt disposable electrode with a power setting of 16 watts on low. Curatage is performed a second time. A second cycle of electrodesiccation is performed moving the electrode back and forth to cover the whole area. Curatage is again performed making sure that the direction of the curette covers all 360 degrees to remove any remaining skin cancer at the edges. Final electrodesiccation is performed and the electrode is used circumferentially around the treated area to ensure that the edges are clear of tumor. Finally, we will demonstrate how you can use electrocoagulation to stop bleeding during common surgical procedures, including shave biopsies and elliptical excisions. Shave excisions of two relatively large cherry angiomas begins with local anesthesia using 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. These cherry angiomas are too large to treat with electrodesiccation alone without the use of local anesthesia. A combination of shave excision and electrocoagulation is more effective and better tolerated due to the use of local anesthesia. The shave biopsy is performed using a dermablade with a cotton-tipped applicator for stabilization. Hemostasis is obtained using a sharp-tip disposable electrode. A second cherry angioma is excised with a dermablade, and a cotton-tipped applicator is used to assist the procedure. A blunt-tipped disposable electrode is used for electrocoagulation to show that both types of electrodes may be employed in this procedure. The power settings are 14 watts on low. A shave excision of a pedunculated nevus near the eye is performed using a dermablade. In order to avoid using aluminum chloride near the eye, electrodesiccation is performed. A cotton-tipped applicator assists in the process by creating a dry field and moving the tissue away from the globe. Electrocoagulation is obtained with a sharp-tip disposable electrode with a power setting of 14 watts on low. An erythematous scaling lesion is suspicious for squamous cell carcinoma in situ. The procedure begins with the injection of 1% lidocaine and epinephrine using a 30 gauge needle. A narrow angle with the skin is most advantageous for the anesthesia needed. A shave biopsy is performed using a dermablade with a gentle sawing motion following the borders marked with a surgical marker. A cotton-tipped applicator is used to apply aluminum chloride for hemostasis. In this case, there was some continued bleeding, so a hyphricator is used to achieve hemostasis at the two bleeding sites. Electrocoagulation is achieved using a blunt-tipped disposable electrode with a power setting of 14 watts on low. A suspicious lesion near the elbow of a woman with a long history of sun-damaged skin is marked with a surgical marker prior to a shave biopsy. Anesthesia is injected at a 20 to 30 degree angle to the skin as the anesthesia does not have to be deep. 
The blanching is caused by the hydrostatic effect plus the epinephrine. The shave biopsy is performed with a dermablade using a gentle sawing motion following the marked lines for guidance. The skin is pinched for stabilization during the shave. Since the patient was on anticoagulation medicine and a previous biopsy had bled more than expected, hemostasis is obtained with electrocoagulation using a hyphricator and a blunt tip electrode with a setting of 14 watts on low. A suspected pigmented basal cell carcinoma is biopsied using a shave biopsy technique with a dermablade. The specimen is stabilized using the end of a cotton-tipped applicator. Hemostasis is obtained using a hyphricator with a blunt-tipped disposable electrode and a power setting of 18 watts on low. A sharp-tipped sterile electrode with a sterile sheath on the handpiece is used to obtain hemostasis after the elliptical excision of a basal cell carcinoma. Cotton-tipped applicators are helpful to pinpoint bleeding areas for electrocoagulation. The power setting is 18 watts on low. After the elliptical excision of a basal cell carcinoma, the hyphricator with a sterile sharp tip electrode is being used to stop the bleeding. Each bleeder is electrocoagulated and the cotton gauze is used to dry the bleeding areas for better visualization of the pinpoint bleeders. The power setting is 18 watts on low. A sterile sheath is covering the hand control pencil. Electrosurgery is being used to stop the bleeding after an elliptical excision of a dermatofibroma from the thigh. A sterile sharp tip electrode is used and the hand control pencil is covered by a sterile sheath. Each bleeder is electrocoagulated and the cotton gauze is used to dry the site as well as visualize the bleeding vessel. Some bleeders need to be treated more than once to produce a dry field. A dry surgical field is essential prior to suturing, and this helps to prevent hematoma formation. An epidermal nevus was excised from the forehead of a teenage boy. Electrocoagulation is performed with a sterile sharp tip electrode, and the handpiece is covered with a sterile sheath. The forehead can be a very vascular site, just like the scalp, and the hyphricator is an essential tool for successful elliptical excision. The cotton gauze is used to dry the bleeding sites for more effective electrocoagulation. It is very difficult to stop bleeding when there is a pool of blood. The cotton gauze also allows for pinpoint visualization of the bleeding sites. After undermining the skin, Additional bleeding sites require electrocoagulation. The skin hook is used to elevate the skin atraumatically and a cotton-tipped applicator helps to pinpoint the bleeders. Hemostasis is obtained using a bipolar Adson forceps on a power setting of 25 watts on high to obtain hemostasis prior to closing the elliptical excision. Note how a gap is maintained between the tips of the bipolar forceps so that the electrical current can pass through the bleeding tissue for maximal coagulation. Electrosurgery is a powerful and versatile tool for skin surgery. With the help of this video and experience treating your patients, you will learn the methods and power settings needed for the full range of electrosurgical procedures. This will allow you to unlock the power of electrosurgery.